All right, mate, how you doing? And welcome to IMO Live. This is my brand new live show where me, you, and some of my closest mates will share our thoughts on the world's football. If you've been watching the channel for a while, you may have seen my IMO or In My Opinion videos before, but what you may not know is I always wanted to make the show bigger and incorporate not just my opinions, but other people's as well. And that's exactly what IMO Live is all about. Today's show will include the biggest talking points from the weekend's action, a mass debate, Yep, uh, the IMO 11, stand up for your club, and of course, a look ahead to next weekend's action in association with Super 6. First up though, it's time to introduce this week's guest. First up, it's the King of the North, AKA the True Geordie, and alongside him, it's hashtag United's own, Faisal Mandog Manji. Yes, boy. There is people to clap, there is people to clap. Um, True Geordie, first of all, welcome to IMO Live. How are you feeling? Congrats, mate. You've gone live. Uh, I do this quite a lot, so it's not a big deal to me, but just keep calm. Everything's going to be all right. Don't you're, worry. you're comfortable. We talked about this off air. You're comfortable with the live. Mate, I can just, I don't need to be edited. I just go, mate. I you're edit myself in here. So. Someone else is pure entertainment and maybe very comfortable with live is Faisal Manji. <laughs> How are you feeling? I'm good, mate. I'm feeling <laughs> excited about this. This is, you've got a lot of opinions. Perfect platform for it. This is the thing, like, I've got a lot of opinions and I've, I've been very happy to share those opinions on the channel, <coughs> but I'm not the only person with opinions and some people have opinions which disagree with me, as you can tell from the comments section, mm. but we're gonna have that going on mm. in here with you guys today and you guys can get involved using the hashtag IMOLive on Twitter. We're gonna be taking some of those best tweets and actually reading them out on the show. Likewise, get your comments in underneath. You're also gonna have some stuff you can actually vote on, okay? Because we want to actually have you guys basically to have the final say on certain topics throughout the show. So keep your ears open and listen to what we've got to talk about. We're going to start off by talking about three of the biggest talking points from this weekend's football action. Okay, lads? I need your opinions on this. Again, I'm going to give mine. You guys give yours on Twitter. Hashtag IMO Live. First of all, Pep Guardiola, Manchester City. What is going on? They got smashed by Everton. 4-0, playing a team of bloody teenagers, half of them, right? What's happening? It's not the first time that defence has gone to, you know what, is it? You know, it's, uh, he's had a few problems, Pep. And the thing is, in Barcelona, he could just play his own way. He had the players to play any style, pretty much. Messi doesn't really need a lot of work, does he? Bayern Munich, the European champions, doesn't need a lot of work. In Man City, a bit of work needed, you know. He needs to rethink things a little bit. He needs a plan B. Yeah. And he doesn't have one, which is why Zabaleta's getting played in centre midfield. So, I mean, that's um, outrageous, isn't it? Yeah, I think he needs to start playing to his team's strengths and not his own strengths. You could say maybe it's a little bit arrogant of, of Pep to come in and think, you know, I don't need to know that much about English football. Mm. I can just make my system work. And like you said, maybe it will eventually, but you've got to actually win games in the meantime because you might not be in the job. Everyone is sackable at the end of the day. Well, it's not like these like Spain and Germany where you will just turn up for some teams and find it easy. You know, teams are going to turn up against you, especially if you're Manchester City. We've seen on the counter-attack, They've been susceptible against yeah. Leicester, against Everton. They've been hammered. Yeah, because at the end of the day, Everton didn't have a load of shots that game. They exactly. took them. Manage dog. If you're Pep Guardiola right now, do you regret taking the job? Like, do you think I should have just stayed at Bayern or retired early? Everyone would have thought I was the best manager of all time, and now I'm being exposed. I think he's an ambitious guy, and he wants to go and set himself challenges. I don't think he should regret taking the job, but perhaps he should regret some of the things he's done. Day one, early days in the job, straight away with Joe Hart. That puts pressure on him. Yeah. Uh, a few big games with Aguero, sort of putting him on the bench and things like yeah. that. So s some of those decisions, I think he's trying to stamp his authority on this team too quickly. It's put a lot of pressure on him. But the problem goals. is, right, I agree completely. I think the problem is he wants to do that and he wants to show that he's, he's not scared. He did the same thing with Zlatan at Barcelona. He's not scared to upset the apple cart, right? However, when you do that, it attracts attention. How much, like, how many games can Pep theoretically lose? How far down the season can they, uh, down the league table, sorry, can they drop before he actually gets sacked? If they don't get Champions League after spending that amount of money, then I would be surprised if he didn't get sacked, to be honest. Then again, he's come with such a huge reputation and might buy him another season. Yeah. But you're looking, you're right, you've got rid of a shot stop and goalkeeper, which essentially is the main job for a goalkeeper. A two time league winner. Then as well. replace him with a goalkeeper that can pass the ball but can't actually save very good shots. Like, you know. So, a bit awkward. Then you've got a defender in John Stone's 50, odd, 50 million or whatever, can't really defend. Do you know, and then Otamendi, we can't even, don't get started on him. So 
he needs to get the basics right in that team. Like they're amazing going forward, but they're not doing the basics no. right, and that is criminal for a, a team with so much money spent on it. My my worry with him is that he says, look, I need to really put my stamp on this team. I need a summer to spend some more money or whatever. Mm. He does that, and he takes his team this much further towards the Pep Guardiola model, which mm. maybe just isn't built for the Premier League. Like I mean, maybe it is. We could be wrong. Mm. But you look at someone like Jurgen Klopp who comes in with his tactics and it's much more fast-paced pressing a little bit more formationally like structured than the Pep one is because what I think Pep's system needs is very clever footballers. Mm -hmm. It wants to be very, he very switched He needs a Yeah. He's a messy. People like David Alaba who can play yeah. centre-back, left-back, CDM. He's trying to do that with Kolarov and Zabaleta and I don't think they've got that. No, and they, but they've spent P a lot of money Players like already. De Bruyne and Aguero are going to have no problems but it, he's getting exposed. I mean, Yaya Torre was exposed against yeah. Everton massively, defensively. So they need players who can do everything. Yeah, I think right now that he's making the best of what he's got, right? So he's trying to turn Sterling around. He had Gundogan, but he's gone out of the team. So he's trying to find players to go in there. Mm. The signings perhaps in the summer and also before that, you look at the fullbacks. That's a really important position in modern day football. Aging fullbacks, that you know, they're after Bellerin, didn't quite get in. So I think it's just not quite worked out even before when Pellegrini left him the team. If you look over the road at Man United, they let um, they let Mourinho have a season right where he didn't perform, didn't get what they wanted, and now the second season is just starting to turn around. The second half of the season, yeah. still the same season. Yeah. yeah, second half of the season. He's I'm saying last season when they, they didn't get Champions League, they didn't get rid of him. They yeah, kept yeah. him in there because yeah. he wasn't there last season. No, he wasn't that was Louis Van Gaal. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is life, everyone. Yeah. You will make mistakes. <laughs> Carry on. But. I know what you mean. He he came in. He had a bad season at Chelsea last yeah. year. Lost his rep a little bit. But it, and Man United started the season really bad. But that's the thing. Three months ago, you might have said he was the one under pressure because Pep had that amazing start. Mm. And it's 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 flipped round. But what, I what? think you have to give managers a season to get things right. And I would even if Pep it doesn't go well for him, I think it's worth giving him another season, no matter where they finish. Because I do think they'll probably finish in the top five. But well, are they still in the title race? No, I mean, you're 10 points off of no. Chelsea. Uh, it's tough, 10 points. How are you going to get big. that back? You've got Liverpool in there as well. You've got Spurs. There's, if, if, if Chelsea do slip up, there'll be people to catch them before Man City will. And you won't win a league title with that defence. No. Fact. And right now, if you had to say who was going to, because at least one of the big teams are going to miss out on top four, who would you say it's going to be, Faze? That's a tough one. I think, I don't think United will get it. You don't? Yeah, I don't think United will. They've been pretty consistent so lately. You're like looking it. at Spurs or City for that fourth spot. Yeah, I think... I mean, you're, you're, I take it you're an Arsenal fan. You're, gonna, you're thinking Arsenal are going to It's going to be it. tough for us, but I think we'll do it. We have improved and we do finish strong. <coughs> I think United, they're, they're doing well now, but I, can, I don't know whether that'll last towards the end of the season. So I think it's going to be really, really tight. But City have got the They've given themselves a lot to do late. Like City has slipped, but they're still ahead, ahead of the game there. So yeah, they've, they've, they've got European football, City as well. That might be... Yeah quite important come the end of the season yeah it's going to be interesting I think Pep's definitely under pressure I think if you said before the season how long does Pep get you, you, he's a, he was the best most in demand manager yeah. in the world I'm enjoying time. this personally I'm, I'm enjoying watching Pep struggle I think it, he's had it so easy at Barca and Bayern yes he did great jobs but it, mate you've got the best players in world football to choose from and even at City it's, it's pretty easy you know, like he's got more money than anyone else, more valuable players, but I'm enjoying watching him struggle. Let's see what he's made of, finally. Well, with that I'll say, let's see what you guys think. Let's get some of the best tweets that have come in using hashtag IMOLive up and let's have a chat about them. First one here is from formal or at underscore text. City players aren't reacting well to new style of tactics Pep has brought in. I think give him a year or two, he can find success. I think we're kind of in agreement about mm. that. The question is, what are you allowed? What is he allowed to do with that year or two? How low can City go before you say, "Hang on, let's change things"? You know, mm -hmm. but it's like with England. England were trying to implement this whole new system. Mm -hmm. They they brought in, um, you know, they brought in Roy Hodgson as a, as a sort of champion for that system, the youth team. But then it got so bad, they went, actually, let's throw that, that owl out and let's get Big Sam in. Obviously, that didn't work out, but to get Big Sam in was a big change of, of tactics. Ironically, the youth setup did pretty poorly, and then we ended up giving the actual top gaffer's job to the bloke in charge of the youth setup. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it, 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 yeah, I mean, has the job. You don't want to follow the English model, do you? The FA is yeah. not. I think if he has a season like Mourinho had at Chelsea, where it, it, it's getting almost relegation battle, I think that will get him sacked. Yeah. But I think. He can, he can afford to get you know, top six this season and, and, and get another year. And then he'll probably have a good year next year if they're not in the Champions well, League. You have to. Let's have a look at another tweet. What else have we got coming in? We've got one here from Daniel Mackey. He says, Pep joined a sinking ship full of money, haven't, haven't adapted to his style. Okay, so what Pep did is he joined a sinking ship, 
loads of money in there. He threw the money out, <laughs> bought John Stones on that sinking ship, and now they're sinking further. Well, players aren't adapting. That, that is... Comes back to those intelligence of the players. Has mm. he got the players that can take on his new tactics, the, the players that can adopt that? Maybe not. So he's going to change it. You've got in January, what, Gabriel Jesus that they signed. Yeah. Is he the saviour? The thing is, right, <laughs> he's the saviour, second coming. Um, <laughs> it's in the thing of John Stones, right, I would have said if there was one defender in world football that would fit Pep's style, it would have been him. A player that wants to, like a young player, lots of promise to play from the back. Mm. But he doesn't seem, I mean... But it, if you look at the players who in the past have done that, like Gerard Piquet, he can actually defend as well though. Yeah. You know, like that's, this is a key component. Everyone's like, oh wow, John Stones can pass the ball. But in his last season at Everton, he was awful. Like I, I remember when he was going for that money and I'm like, has nobody been watching him this season? Is it all Jagielka's fault, is it? Because he was complicit in that as well. So I'm, uh, I've been shocked by John Stones' uh, valuation and, and less shocked by his performances this season. Well, we've got one more tweet on the Pep subject. This one is from Treble Touchline. And he says, uh, Pep managed to get the greatest teams in Spain and Germany by a long shot to not be in the top four. With that team, you've failed, mate. Yeah, yeah. He, I mean, yeah, so that's true. The, the team he had in Spain, um, at, at the time, the Real Madrid team didn't really compare to it, I wouldn't say, when mm-hmm. he was managing Barcelona then. Um, obviously, Bayern Munich is even more in Germany. Dortmund is your only real competition. This year, there's a few new teams that are coming about, but in Pep's reign, it was fairly standard. It was one horse race. He didn't win the Champions League with Bayern, let's remember that. For um, three years he had yeah. them as well. And now he's got, has he got the best team in England though? Are, are Man City on paper the best team? I think it's a great setup to walk into as a job. Like they're a well-run club, they've pumped loads of money into it and they've had success quite recently. So you look at the big jobs that are coming up in England, if he wants to go and test himself in the English league, taking the City job is a great platform. He can't have any complaints on with paper, that. It's the easiest yeah. job, isn't it? Yeah. On, yeah. Because you're walking in, you've got Aguero, who's arguably the best player in the league. You've maybe got, some people would say Sanchez and Hazard. He's one of them. De Bruyne. I mean, is there a better two players in a team than those two, De Bruyne and Aguero? I mean, you, and the, he has missed Aguero a lot this season. A lot of yeah, issues. Right. But Aguero's score goals. But let's move on to the other side of Manchester now. Talk about Manchester United or, or a particular player at Manchester United. Paul Pogba. Okay. <coughs> Trending for all the wrong reasons, some <laughs> might say. Yesterday in the game, you may have seen Paul Pogba advertising hoardings all around the pitch mid-game. Yeah. Obviously, he's got his own hashtag emoji now on Twitter. Yeah. What does this mean? Because I, I tweeted about it yesterday and I thought, you wouldn't have seen this under Sir Alex. And in fact, Sir Alex was one of the reasons Pogba left United in the first place. He was getting a bit too big for his boots. Now, I'm not saying Pogba is, is asking for this. I'm not saying that he is demanding that he has his own Twitter emoji and is stuff around the hoardings. What I'm saying is, it's going to affect him. It's going to make him feel like he's the main man. He's definitely a great Is he player. becoming bigger than the club in the he's way that great, he does? They wouldn't have been able to do all that without him signing off on do you not, that. That's my thing. My thing, if I'm Pogba, I should say, guys, stop doing this. Well, yeah. Remember the David Beckham era and how anti that Alex Ferguson was. He hated it. He absolutely hated it. The team comes first. And now it's getting to the stage where when Pogba does make a mistake, it's, it's becoming even more of a big yeah. deal. He's putting more pressure. He's still a young lad. Like, we should be trying to calm this down, but... Pogba doesn't have any plans on doing that by the looks of it. He, he wants to be the main man. And if you want to be the main man and you're a Man United player, probably want to show up in the biggest game of the season, mate. <laughs> and not just do a dab in the box and give away a penalty. Well, bloody hell, mate. Um, don't forget to get your, your comments in on Twitter. Hashtag IMO Live. What do you think about Paul Pogba? But Faisal, if you're Paul Pogba's teammate, playing centre mid next to him wherever, and you look and you see Paul Pogba's face all over the hoardings behind you, <laughs> and you see him give away a penalty in the box, and you see him earning triple the money you're earning, what are you thinking? Firstly, with the hoardings, you don't want to accidentally pass to him. If you think that's him <laughs> over there, you pass into an emoji, that's pretty embarrassing. Um, I think it, it shows how football's changed, right? It's so much more commercial now. So it, it's the balance. Like, the commercial aspect is what's brought him to the club. So you get to train with him, get him in your team. Yeah. Big money to get him. And I think a lot of the sponsors, etc., are part like of that. Part, yeah, yeah. So they're asking for him you know, with the boots, mm. with the emoji and everything. That's part of building that out. You, we're going to bring him to the club because it's going to bring all this other stuff in. But the trade-off is, as you said, the pressure on him to perform and whether that's a bit of a distraction for the rest of the team. So I think, what would you prefer? Not having Pogba and getting someone for half the money who's half as good or having Pogba with all these distractions and things Well, like that's that. the question, though. Is half the money half as good? Reality is someone for 50 million is not going to be half. I mean, look at what Kante, uh, Leicester, yeah. relative unknown. And well, that's a great example, to be fair, because that is someone who's very unassuming, doesn't make a lot of noise. He's not a brand. He like let his football is. do the And talking. he basically win, won a Premier League for Leicester last season. Yeah. And, yeah. He, and he's done bloody brilliantly. Straight into Chelsea. the team at Chelsea. Well, I went to um, the Inter Milan versus Lazio game in December. And yeah. uh, I'm telling you now, that level, that level of that league right now 
and I watch championship football regularly. Yeah. <laughs> it's championship level football. I don't care what anyone says. That was supposedly a big game. It was awful. And, and I've watched the league. It's, Paul Pogba has made his name in a poor league. Like it or lump it, it's the truth. And it's time that he steps up and delivers for the money. He, he is not, don't get us wrong, I think he's had some good games and I'm not, I want him to do well. Actually, like, I enjoy the way he plays football. I'm not just trying to rain on him, but, you know, that was pathetic. No, I just know. think it's too much. We've never seen a footballer get this sort of attention. Even when Ronaldo went to Real Madrid, they wasn't doing it. It's like, Quite social really. media's come on a long way since then, so maybe it would have happened if it happened now. I but mean, Bale, for example, yeah. went to Real Madrid relatively recently. He was left to do his work. I think He didn't have a rapper in a video with him, announcing <laughs> no. him. Do you no. know what I mean? I mean, I just think, look at Fernando Torres when he went to Chelsea, the amount of pressure he was under when it wasn't working for him and it broke him, yeah? Pogba's gone for tw twice as much money almost. Mm. He's got that pressure on him. He's at a bigger club, the world's biggest club in the world, we're led to believe, Manchester United. The last thing he needs is anything extra to pile on more pressure. And I think he's got that. And I think he enjoys it right now, but he mm. may look back and regret it in the future. We'll see. I mean, the Adidas money is probably making him feel a bit better. Yeah, I think, he's gonna, I think he's going to lose friends in the Man United setup and lose fans maybe yeah. eventually as well. Because at what point do you stop buying into it if you're a Man United fan, if he's not scoring goals, if he's not helping I think I think they're going to give him... I think Man United fans are quite... They're more patient than what they get given credit for, to be fair to them. So I think they'll give him time. But I think next season, if by December we're seeing the current level of performances... I think some of them might want their money back. Like, yeah. He's definitely not even playing at 50... Half the price that they got him for, he's not even playing at that. I know it's a long-term buy, that's the whole point of it, but you know, you've got to see something in the immediate... Yeah, definitely, for that sort of money. Let's see what you guys think online. Uh, hashtag IMO Live. Let's take a look at the tweets that have been coming in on Pogba. Milo says, One bad game doesn't define a player. Overpriced, but still world-class. I've got to agree. I don't, I'm actually not laying into Pogba based on the performance yesterday. Mm. You're allowed to have a bad game, right? I'm talking more about the circus that's surrounding him. I don't think it's good for a player. I don't think it's going to help him really fill that Man United shirt and, and, and do what he needs to do for that sort of money. So mine's more about the social media alongside it. I think I love social media in football. Obviously, what we're all doing is part of it. Mm. But when it comes so focused on one player who's part of a whole he, squad, he obviously it's dangerous. He, he believes his own hype to a degree. You see with the haircut, you see how like, he's all about image. So he, I, he must enjoy it to a degree, I think. I think, he, I think he's... He's seen the benefits of it, for sure, and, and, and his bank account will be loving it. But, that, I mean, this, it's going to link to our next topic, to be honest, we talk about. Because at what point does playing football and being a footballer not be the top of your priorities anymore? Because I, I think, as a purist, if you love football and you grew up playing it and you want it to be a footballer all your life, and you get to the point when you're playing at the top level, all you should care about is reaching your pinnacle and being mm -hmm. the best footballer you can be. And if you're thinking, and if other things are distracting you instead of supporting those things, that's, you've, got that, get, you've got to cut them out. This is where I give credit to people like Ronaldo and Messi, who did all of that. They're, you know, they've been on the covers of FIFA and computer games and they've done all the advertising, but still, their number one priority was always football and that is why they reached their full potential. And if Pogba doesn't do that, then he never will. Exactly. I think the best thing you can do now is... Um get a normal haircut, go to training, train hard and put the performances on the like, pitch. Like, like that. Pogba needs I don't a choose this. haircut. Spot on, mate. There's no wrong with it. Let's Love take a it. look at the next tweet. Who's this one from? It's from Warby. Uh, people whipping into Pogba for his performance yesterday, but people seem to forget the last three months he's been crossed. I mean, I wouldn't <coughs> say he's been crossed for the last three months, but he has, he's definitely started to He's definitely to been through. pretty good. He's, yeah. had some, he's had some much better performances than what we've seen against Liverpool. Yeah. The problem is, people remember those ones. Yeah. Like the big games is what defines players. Like Man United, no, Roy Keane, he turned up in the big games. All their best players, Cantona, Ronaldo, Van Nistelrooy, they turn up in the big games. It's no good having a player spending that much money on him and not turning up in the big games. So in the next big game, he has to turn up. We have to remember as well, he's coming into a team that wasn't settled at United. They've only yeah. just worked out like with mm. uh, Carrick and Herrera that yeah. seems to work in midfield. So he's getting used to all of that as well. And he was playing in a backdrop where Man United weren't really doing too well either. So that's, that's Mourinho seems before. to have figured it out. I'll give him credit. I think, I think he's got... He's, he's building now, because Mourinho always seems to take a year, and then in the second year, he seems to get it right. Yeah. And I think this, he's, he's just finding everything out now. He's doing the right thing. For me, though, just to clarify, I, 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 I'm not, I've not got a problem with him on the pitch. I just think that all the things Faisal just said are true. It's a settled season. He's got to get used to it. Don't draw extra attention mm -hmm. to it. Just let it happen. Let's move on to our third topic from this weekend. Um, slightly linked to the last one, you could say, but Diego Costa to Chelsea is being talked about. Uh, sorry, not to Chelsea. To leave Chelsea for China, okay? Uh, is being talked about. 
this one baffles me personally. I get it. It's a lot of money, right? But like we were just talking about, football purists, purists should want to play at the highest level. Okay, I get it. Maybe when you reach the end of your career, you want to have that final payday. Diego Costa, <laughs> even though he looks like he's at the end of his career, he's not, is yeah. he? I think he's 28 years old. Mm. Is it, is it, am I the only one who thinks it's absolutely laughable that he'd consider leaving Chelsea right now, joint top goal scorer, top of the league? Maybe, maybe Oscar's given a ring and said, yeah, mate, it's absolutely it's decent. Over here. <laughs> I'm living like a king, man. <laughs> Honestly, get yourself over here. It's fantastic. I mean, I mean seriously, though, like, do you think you should make this move? Oh, mate, it's absolutely mental. I mean, right now, I would say he's been in the top three players of the season so far. He's back to the Costa that won Chelsea the league in the first place. Yeah. Uh, he's one of my favourite players to watch when he's like that. Even though you hate him, he's entertaining. Do you know what I mean? So it would be a real shame. I think it would just be... I'd pretty much just give up on footballers at that point. Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. I'm, not, I'm not expecting you to do an Alan Shearer. I'm not expecting <laughs> you to turn your back on all the best clubs in the world and come back to your hometown club. But I am expecting you, when you're already getting paid a ton of money for mm-hmm. Chelsea, you're, all, you're at the highest level, you've got it, you're living every kid's dream who supports Chelsea... Why would you go to China? I mean, who I mean, cares? We have seen, do that when you're 34. Exactly. I mean, we have seen some players do that sort of move mid-career. Not necessarily ones at the pinnacle before, but mm. I remember when Asamo Gian was tearing it up for, for, for Sunderland after the World Cup and he just left. I think he went to Qatar. Or, so that, I don't blame him for leaving Sunderland though because uh, if you've true. ever been there, you would know why he left. That had nothing to do with money. The, the point is though, he wasn't considered you know, in one of the top 20 footballers in the world. No, for example. No, you may no. maybe put Diego Costa in that bracket. Uh, it's not a good sign for football. Um, I don't want to take anything away from China because I think they should be more than entitled to go and grow their own football. I mean, there's a lot of people watching football in that part of the world and they should go and grow their own league. <coughs> the point I'm making is more that they're doing it for a lot of money, the same way that the Premier League have attracted yeah. players. But the Premier League has always been a very competitive league. It might not be the best league. The teams in the Premier League might not be the best teams in Europe. They're definitely not. But for me, it's still the most competitive and it's still one of the highest levels of football across the 20 teams. And for you to go and leave it for China, Diego Costa would dominate that league considerably. Mm-hmm. I'm sure he'd feel good about himself. But when he looks back on his career 10, 15 years from now, would he feel like he gave it? Is well? anyone going to care if he's got 10 uh, you know, league winners medals in China? No, he's not. He's sure his grandkids then. They're just going to be like, I, yeah, I've got a few <laughs> in the back, mate. And all. You know what I mean? <laughs> Who cares? You know, it's nothing to be proud of. Like Graziano Pella and other people who've gone over there, you know, it's supposed to be you, like, you know, enjoying a couple of years at the end of your career, like what, I don't know, players who used to move to America were. That's, that's what this is about. Yeah. Don't do it in the prime of your career, mate. No. The timing is absolutely absurd. Like, it didn't look like he was enjoying it last season. There were some rumblings in the summer whether he wanted to go or not, yeah. and he wasn't quite settled. And then all of a sudden, Conte gets him going really well, got a chance to finish off this season, mm. win a trophy, go out on a high... But he seems, he seems to have his head turned and you question who's influencing that decision. The numbers are crazy that they're talking yeah. about. Yeah, yeah. 600, people get cuts of this, the agents, etc. Yeah. And are they I saying, mean, how much money does a person need? I think he's on 125 what? now. 125 grand. Now, yeah. what, what's he going to buy more with that? Like, I mean, what? Is he going to buy like gold? More anti-aging Just, cream. Yeah. <laughs> he needs as much as he can get. To be it's, fair. it's a massive that change. If he's not happy in London and his family from, from Spain where they were before and they're going to China, it's a huge change as well. So who's to say you're going to settle? You've got all that Traffic money. Traffic in London's a nightmare, to be fair to Matt. I would... I don't think it's much better in China. <laughs> probably. A lot of people over there. there. There is a lot of people in China. You make a good point. Yeah. There. There's a lot. I think like, he's free to do what he wants at the end of the day. Football, footballers are free to make their money wherever they want to do and he will find it easy over there. If you, it, you know what's great? Um, it reminds me of like when you're a kid mm. and you can either play in the school team or the year above, for example, where the best players are and you might just get in the team or you can go and play with the year sevens and just score 10 goals and feel good about yourself and they'll give you some sweets. I always pick the, the year sevens <laughs> to play football with. <laughs> I just want to be clear on that one. Right, Football is what I meant to. Let's take a look at some of the tweets of the Diego Costa uh, affair. Costa is unreal, but if he wants to leave, we should let him go. No chance of making the Spain World Cup squad playing in China. Now, this is it, right? I mean, we're going to talk more about someone that maybe wants to leave a club. Even if Costa doesn't leave, even if they don't let him go, could this be enough to derail their season? Or do you think Chelsea are a non-stop train all the way to the Premier League title? Mind you? I think, well, obviously the last game they did really well with that front three. Uh, William Pedro and Hazard look, look decent but in those big games Costa with, with his head screwed on has been absolutely unplayable at times he's really hurt defenders they've got uh, Batshuayi he's not really played much so I think if the goals dry up it could make it tighter but with a 10 point lead you'd, you'd hope they'd be able to see that through without him Are they still your prediction with and without Costa for the league? Without Costa I would say that they won't win the Premier League title. Really? I, goals 
or everything at the top level. Like this is when, especially in the big games, we're talking about the big games with Pogba. Uh, in the big games, Diego Costa delivers. We've seen what he does. To, he winds defenders up so much, and you need a physical presence. Now, as much as they smashed Leicester, William Hazard and Pedro, there's no physical presence there. Costa is desperately needed by that team. And ten points, all right, the ten points clear of uh, Man City. I think it's, they're only like six points or f uh, seven points clear of uh, Liverpool. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. can be caught. That can definitely be caught. Definitely. And, and they've got a lot of teams that can catch them. It's not like last season. No, it, it was yeah, there's Arsenal, Spurs, Liverpool, there's a few. So. Okay. Well, it's going to be interesting to see what happens with Diego Costa. Again, my if he leaves, it will, I will lose that. When your heart breaks a little bit as a football fan, every time this happens, I've never seen someone at this level do it, though. Not in that prime. In their, I mean, Giovinco to America, maybe, you could argue. I think he was in and out of the Italy squad. Yeah. He decided to go to, I think he went Italian to Toronto. Italian football, though, isn't it? <laughs> Good Sorry player. about it. I've bashed Italian football a lot, but it is low level, so I had to be honest. <laughs> We've got one more Diego Costa tweet. Uh, this one is going to be from Harry Ashley. Lose Costa, lose title for Chelsea, in well, my so. opinion. It's as simple as that. True Jordi agrees mm -hmm. and Faisal sort of thinks maybe they could still win it about him. I think it's theirs to lose even without Costa. What okay. about the second striker? Ba ba Batshuayi? Yeah, Have Belgium. you been linked with a loan move for him? We've been time? linked with a loan move for everyone, Jordi. No one yeah, wants to come true. to us. No one wants to come to us because of the way we run the club at the moment. This yeah. is the West Ham we're talking about here. Um, Batshuayi, for me, would, would be madness for them to let him go even mm. with Costa because the they haven't got a lot of strikers, yeah. Chelsea. And he actually looked decent when he's come off the bench for them. Yeah, I think he's a good player. The same was, I mean, we were linked with Daniel Sturridge as well. Again, I don't understand why, even if Klopp doesn't want to start him, why you wouldn't keep him there? Why no. would you loan him out? Like, sell him, if anything. Um, there's a couple of Man United players been linked with. But yeah, no, I think um, Batshuayi would definitely be the front runner to come in. I don't know how much Conte likes him. Him with Fabregas as well, because they're not getting a lot of time. <coughs> and now would be the, that would have been the game this weekend to play Batshuayi, right? There was no, there was yeah. no recognised striker point. in there. Yeah. Make a point of go if you want. I've got this big lad coming in, no problem. I mean, he's been getting linked with Lorente. Like, that seemed, I know he managed him before at Juventus, but for me, Lorente <coughs> scored, what, two goals at Swansea? Struggling mm. Swansea? I know he's a sort of target man in the Diego Costa mould, but would you bring him in at Chelsea ahead of Batshuayi? I don't know. Right, we're going to move on to the inappropriately named Mass Debate. Okay, a lot of people debating. That's as simple as it is. And you guys are actually a part of this. Okay, there's going to be an option for you to actually vote on this and tell us what you think. And at the end of the show, we'll reveal what way you came down on it all. But today's mass debate is all about Dimitri Payet mm. of West Ham. Should he go or should he stay? What should West Ham do with this guy? Let's remind you of the situation. Star signing last year, smashed it for West Ham. Gave us our first ever season in the Premier League with a positive goal difference, right? That's, how, that's embarrassing. <laughs> um, since then, not, had a great Euros, had a fantastic Euros. Yeah. Went off the boil a little bit this season. We've been struggling. Signing a new contract. Yes, that's and important. Th there was a about. lot of talk about him leaving and he signed a new contract and every West Ham fan was like, all right, we love him even more now. Became our highest paid player in history. Mm. Uh, ironically, this month's picked up a £1 million loyalty bonus because <laughs> he didn't leave uh, yet. Um, hasn't had the best start of the season, although he did score a fantastic goal. One of the best goals seen at the London Stadium early in the season. But yeah, it's been a bit quiet. We're starting to find out why this might have been. We're actually starting to find out why it might have affected the whole of West Ham's form. Because he's not been turning up to training. Really? He's been turning up and uh, the last day of the week and insisting he plays the next game. Uh, he's been now recently said he's, he wants to leave the club so much he'll fake injury if he has to. Um, Bilic, obviously the manager of West Ham, has come out and said he's not leaving. We're not if I was club. Bilic, I'd say, mate... You won't have to fake injury. I'll give you a real one. <laughs> I'll tell you. Well, I mean, smashing one. He's right got in the, the option of sticking him in the reserves. He's got yeah. the, he's got a four year contract, I believe. Right, so he, that's the prime of his life because he's approaching thirty years old now, Dimitri Payet. Mm. Okay, theoretically, he could stay at West Ham and no one would want him, and it would be a waste of both our resources and Payet's career. Uh, no one really wants to do it like that. It's not good for player morale to leave someone <coughs> who's not happy. It's obviously had an effect on the squad. They don't like the fact he's getting special treatment and he's not even performing the way that he has been. Um, there's a few different things we can talk about here, but first of all, I want to find out what you guys' instinctual reaction is. Should West Ham try and keep him? Uh, just to throw one more thing in, Marseille have apparently made a second bid for Dimitri Payet today. Yeah, we 22 this. million, which was rejected. Uh, I think 22 West Ham, million, is that yeah, it? West yeah. Ham won 30, which I think is fair. Um, what do you think West Ham should do? I'm, I'm surprised it's that low, to be honest. I mean, the level he's been playing at, when you think of, I mean, all right, he's 30 years old, but he's been world-class for a while now. So 
30, even 30 million seems a little bit low. You've got four years on him as well. Yeah, I think it's his age. I think now the fact that we've come out and said he wants to leave, that's always going to affect mm. the price. Just to let you know, guys, you can vote on this yourself. Click the I button, the top right-hand corner of the screen on YouTube, and you can say, should Payet be sold, yes or no? We'll reveal which has won the vote at the end of the show. Um, Faisal Manji, if you're in charge of a football team and you've got your best player, but he's giving you grief, he's making it harder for you to win games, he's making it harder for you your other players to play their best, at what point do you cut your losses? I think with this situation, you've got to do it. It feels like he's got to go now. It's but at what price? Things. Well, that's the thing. As the club, you can't be as uh, upfront about that because then you're not going to get the price you want. It's all a bit of a game now. The club has to feel like they can retain him. Although, what would you do with him? Could you just keep him in the reserves? Are you going to get him back on side? But that's not really going to work out. So you've got to look like you're not just to so, so the price goes up a little bit. And with Arsenal, last few seasons, we've been used to selling those those best players and, and life continues we had to get rid of Vieira, Henri, Fabregas, Van Persie because they get to that stage where they just don't want to be there and you can't stop them because what's yeah, the point I mean, of having I'd say one a pie eight that can't perform? I agree I'd say one thing that hurts a bit more as a West Ham fan is we not we don't get these sort of level players very often we, we, we got a little bit lucky and a bit fortunate we backed ourselves with Payet and also those players you just gave you just exa- Arsenal examples how many years at the club did they spend? Three, four, five, we've had him for one season. It feels like he hasn't given us what he, did, what he should have given us. We've, the love we've given him, the money we've given him, it, it feels a little I bit... I have to say, I think the fact that the West Ham fans worship him the way they do and the way he's trapped the club in return is an absolute disgrace. To be honest, he deserves a kick in, in training, to be honest. Like, one of those players should give him a good hiding, to be honest, because uh, I think it's an absolute disgrace the way he's going on. Before I you... mean, if you want to move, find me. But at least turn up for training yeah, exactly. and turn up to the matches like everyone else does. There's many players get transfers. You go through the motions at least and put your all in while you're getting paid ridiculous it's paychecks. Not on. It's not on. It's, it's disrespectful. Disgrace. And I think before you guys actually make your vote, a few things you could maybe bear in mind on this, this note. Um, first of all, Dimitri Payet is actually notorious for being a sort of one season wonder. He's actually played for three or four different clubs, obviously mostly in France. I was told this even before this season happened. Yeah. He's known for trailing off in his second season after having a great start. Um, does he know that about himself, perhaps? Maybe he wants to move. Maybe he needs to move in order to keep himself motivated. Second of all, Slavan Bilic actually did almost the exact same thing to West Ham when he was a player for us. He played for us for a very small period of time, just over a season, I believe. Demanded a move because Everton came in for him. Said to Harry Redknapp, who was the manager at the time, I want to go to a bigger club. I think Everton are a bigger club. Harry actually used the exact same words. Some people tweeted this at me today. Um, the, the same word, bitter and angry, I think is what Slavin said. Harry used the exact same words um, about Slavin Bilic, saying he's really, he sees West Ham as a big club, he doesn't think that he should have to go to Everton. And then Bilic said at that time, um, when a player gets this sort of move, you have to, you have to leave, as simple as that. Yeah. So he's Bilic getting a little bit of taste of his own medicine. What he did as a player is happening to him as a manager. I think when you're a bigger club, though, like say if a player wanted to leave, I don't know, Man United, Liverpool, somewhere like that, because they are financially able to cope with just letting the player rot like that, they're in a stronger position. But everyone knows West Ham can't really do that right now. So I think that they're vulnerable. So I, I think they do have to sell personally, but I would be tempted to just at least give another five months and let them rot in the reserves until the summer. Like, or, or just, I mean, I don't even think he'd turn up, but I think maybe Billich has let this get out of control as well. The fact that we didn't know this, but he's not been turning up for training for a while now and he's been playing anyway. I think the fact that he let him get away with that in the first place shows bad man management, if, that's, if that is true, because all the other players are going to now resent Billich for letting him away with that. Yeah, I mean, the rumours we're hearing is that West Ham's plan was to, yeah, essentially let him rot and, um, and actually sue him or fine him for in breaching <coughs> his contract, mm-hmm. breaching his contract by not turning up and stuff, which is their option and their right to do so. Doesn't leave a good taste in the mouth for other players at the club and they feel a bit victimised sometimes mm-hmm. when that happens. But I think in this case, it could work. We don't, we're not supposed to need the money. We've got a load of money from the season tickets we sold. Our problem isn't money. Our problem is, one, attracting the right level of player we want. And two, our problem is the way our board are currently bidding for players is embarrassing. We've got the money to spend on Defoe, on Snodgrass, on Hogan, whoever. Let's just decide if we want them or not. Do you know what I mean? I'm not saying we should get them. 30 million is is a lot to West Ham still. It's still a lot. Of course, it's always a lot. And you want to to get what you're worth. And I think once that offer is made, they will sell. But the point is, rather than embarrassing ourselves and publicly bidding... Three million for Snodgrass or whatever it is. Six million for Defoe really did boggle my mind. Yeah. I mean, that is just mental. That is, that is insane to me. Like, I just found that a bizarre bid. Do you think it would have been different if in, 
the summer, the transfers went a bit different in, te- in terms of not getting all of these players that didn't quite hit, hit the button, but getting like another sort of blockbuster signing to go yeah. along with Yeah, Payet. we didn't have a good summer in that respect. I think that's what part made Payet more likely to leave. I felt like he was always going to leave at the end of the season, but the way he's handled it's not cool. Don't forget, you guys can have your say. You can vote. Should West Ham sell Dimitri Payet in this January transfer window? Yes or no? Click the I button to do so. At the end of the show, we'll reveal uh, which was the most popular of the votes. Now we're going to move on. We're going to move on to the IMO 11, okay? This is an 11 we're going to build throughout the series here on the live show. And to start it off, we need to populate this 11. I've made my 11, okay? I've given 11 players. This isn't the best 11 players in the world of all time or currently. It's 11 players that mean something to me that I think is an amazing team that maybe I've watched growing up, whatever. And the idea is every time I have a guest on the show, they're going to suggest someone that should come into that 11 in the, in the place of someone I've got in there. And you guys are going to decide whether they make it in or not. Okay, so to start things off, before Jordi, you suggest who you'd like to put in there. I already know who I'm putting in. All right, well, I, I reckon I can figure it out as well. Let's <laughs> take a look at who's currently in my IMO 11. All right, let's have a look. So this is it. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk you through it. I'm going to talk you through it. In goal. The big Italian, Gianluigi Buffon. Pretty much all of my life, this guy's been one of the most dominant goalkeepers in the world. I love him. Um, there is a bit of a Juventus theme to this team, which has happened kind of accidentally. But yeah, Buffon, legend in goal. Two Brazilian fullbacks, two of the best fullbacks I've seen in my lifetime. <coughs> Roberto Carlos and Cafu, fantastically going forward and defending. Uh, centre back, you've got Maldini and you've got Bobby Moore, West Ham legend. Bobby Moore, the only real player in this team that I never really saw play, apart from you know, looking back. In person, and, yeah. Yeah, in person, and, but I know all it's about it. It's a bit him. like Tupac, though. You know he's good. You yeah. didn't have to go. Oh, I, you know I actually I mean? used to go to loads of Tupac gigs when I was eight, though. <laughs> um, Maldini. Swinging the chin. <laughs> Maldini's in centre-back, versatile, veteran, did it for so long, mm. used to love watching him. I've got a diamond formation in midfield. I've got uh, Andrea Pirlo playing the sort of quarterback role, just pinging passes all day long. Mm-hmm. Edgar Davids, box-to-box midfielder. Z- Zinedine Zidane, we all know about him, World Cup winner, Champions League winner, just a legend. Uh, Del Piero, another Juventus player, behind the strike force. That number 10 role, love him. Mm. Up front... Probably the weakest part of this team, to be honest, if, in terms of football. But we've got Paolo Di Canio, West Ham legend, in there for similar reasons to Bobby Moore. Scored one of the best goals ever scored by a West Ham player, that amazing you know, mm-hmm. bicycle kick. Uh, although Andy Carroll's goal this weekend might trump it. And then next to him, no one's favourite commentator, but a very good footballer who I think isn't getting the credit he deserves Five to human player. being, really, isn't he? Well, let's remember Michael Owen. He was a Ballon d'Or winner, mate. How, yeah. He's the last Englishman to win Some one. Some years will be easier to win than others. Isn't it? Yeah, of course, but you don't win a Ballon d'Or easy. Story that means he was the Zidane. best player in the world. Zidane once nearly signed for Blackburn Rovers after they won the Premier League. Yeah, wow. Seen nearly uh, when when Shearer had that season. Well, I know that because a lot of big the Man United players yeah. um, were bought off the recommendations of players. So like when Ronaldo, then they bought Ronaldo is because they played against Sporting in a friendly and someone recommended it. Mm. And but uh, same thing happened with Zidane. I think when he was at, mm-hmm. even when he was at Juve when he was in France before that yeah. Man United played him I think Roy Keane said Fergie you've got to sign that guy yeah, yeah. and Fergie passed on him Yeah. So made a miss- few mistakes said Fergie anyway that's my team so you can start letting us know what you think about that team guys I know it's not the best footballing team but it's a team that means something to me you have got the chance Geordie to propose a replacement player and then the guys watching at home are going to decide whether oh. that player, player should go in okay it's Mike alone though you've got to get rid of him you've got to... you want to take Owen out yeah I mean I think I'm going to win the vote on that one just for, just for who I'm getting out before I even say who's coming in yeah, I had a feeling, I think, I think so today's annoying. generation, people don't like He's him. so annoying. But think of the footballer behind the annoyingness. What, a, a player who had a couple of good years early on and then was like mediocre for 10 years uh, He played for Real Madrid, mate, that's not he easy. He didn't really play though, did he? I mean, he, he sat on the bench for Real Madrid. He probably did a great job warming it. Got Next no thing you're going to say, Jonathan Woodgate he wasn't fantastic. <laughs> he was for Newcastle. He was for um, us. No, I, I loved Owen. I mean, look, all I remember, okay, maybe it's sentimental, but 98 World Cup. Does what he does off the bench, 18 years old. Yeah. I mean, what a moment. But you want to take Owen out? Yeah, I do. For another player who played in the 98 World Cup, the England captain of the 98 World Cup, Alan Shearer. Surprise, surprise. So, follows me on Twitter. All right, Alan? <laughs> does if, you're, if you're watching. Do you follow uh, a lot of people on Twitter? No, mate. He's quite selective, which uh, makes me feel better about it. All right, what I need you to do now, Jordan, I need you to make a case. To not, not to me, to be right. watching at home. Why should Alan Shearer take Michael Owen's... Uh, well, it's, it's quite simple really he's the record goal scorer of the Premier League he didn't do it playing for Real Madrid and Man United you know he did it playing for Newcastle and Blackburn he was a proper striker who scored goals throughout his whole career he didn't peak early on he peaked 
the whole time, pretty much, until he was really old. Um, so he was fantastic. He could do it all. He could hold the ball up. He could hit them from all over. He wasn't just a player who could just run at players and then bury it in the bottom corner. He did everything. Alan Shearer was the complete striker. And there's a reason why he's the record goal scorer in the Premier League, mate. He's the best. OK, well, it's hard to argue with that, but I'm going to try. Mm. Uh, it's my job now to try and put up a case to leave my Can I come back team. to you afterwards? We'll just no, keep going you had your moment. And going <laughs> and going. Because I've got his autobiography, Shearer, so I could probably tell you a few more things. Anyway, carry on. I've got my client's autobiography, but I think That was probably really two. boring. <laughs> no, listen, we've talked, I mean, I've sort of made the case already, but what I'm asking you guys to do before you vote for Shearer or Owen is not to think about BT Sport commentary, not to think about what he says about footballers now, is to think about what he was as a footballer. Yes, he didn't. Uh, he also played for Newcastle, by the way. He didn't play, mate. We he had, did play. We had him. four years of nothing. He was a waste of money. He scored some goals. He scored some, yeah. Exactly. I mean, the thing with Some Alan, goals isn't enough to win this the, vote the now, is it? With, uh, Who was the record goal scorer for Newcastle? Alan Shearer. That's why he should win it. And the OB? Get out. No, but listen, listen. I'm not arguing that Owen was amazing for 15 years like Shearer was. Okay, I'm arguing that in his prime, the way Owen made me feel about myself was good. Okay, what he did for England in that 98 World Cup. I is mean, that yes, why you've got his last name? Did that, you sort of? Yeah. Did you change your name by Deepol because of him? Did you? So you must have liked them. I mean, I was I was born already before he started doing right, that stuff. But so. I mean, I would happily do it. The thing is, right. Yes, the goal he scored against Argentina, we, we ended up getting knocked out that game. But he gave us hope in a game where there was none because Beckham got himself sent off. Built up false hope. Yeah, did some silly things. But Michael Owen was there. As the, the old, I mean, you think Marcus Rashford's come on the scene and done well. This guy came on the scene, started banging in goals. Yeah. Fraser, you know what I'm talking about. He was scoring goals. Before, <laughs> before it was called to score that goals. Face, so me. That face when you throw it to him to get him to save you and he just scores... Out of interest, man, <laughs> who would you go for in this? I think you set it up with Owen to get rid of him. One thing I will say is that whenever this ends, Zidane's going to be in that team. Yeah. That, that He's for me, runner, is he? the best player what in the team. I, I would swap out Owen. I, I'd take Shearer ahead of, of Owen, but I'd also take Henri ahead of Shearer. Yeah, well, that, it's not your choice. I know. So I'm don't listen to him. But this isn't about, you know, a couple of seasons of constant. Yeah. Yeah. And I do want everyone, before they vote, to go uh, just YouTube, make a own commentary and listen to how bad he is and then vote. Because then you'll, you'll vote the right way. Not everyone's as good a commentator as True Georgie. The this is it. And that's why I commentate all the YouTube games. Let's and take there's nobody look. else who can do it. The so. votes have been coming in. Okay, uh, I'm not looking forward to this. Let's see if Michael Owen is still going to be in the IMO 11. Uh, let's find out if people have, ag- have agreed with True Geordie. Mm. What? Okay. Okay, well, there's a swap that's, happened there, isn't it? I've Shira got, has got gone in. Um, 87%. Wow. 87%. Yes. Of people have voted for Alan. That's actually, I thought it would be less than that. I thought it would be 40. <laughs> um, He's genuinely devastated. Yeah. So, okay. Sorry, mate. Owen's out. I should have chosen someone else. Through. I'll be interested to see how many players I've still got in that 11, you know, Can 10 I, episodes uh, from now. We got this? Uh, but yeah, 87% of you have said Alan Shearer. So he's officially in the IMO 11. Michael Owen is gone. Shira. And interestingly, the rules mean that Michael Owen cannot come back in the team. I no don't one think else he would ever have in. made it back in anyway. I'm pretty confident people would have tried to put him in yeah. there, mate. Um, I, think, I think Di Canio and Del Piero will also be weak links there, mate. I expect them to go. Yeah. Yeah, good players, but just not top players. Okay, well, she, she was in there. Um, one Del Piero was, was top player, just wanted, but not, there's, there's better out there, isn't there? He did it for a long time as well, though. Yeah, but, a long, long time. I expect, like, you know, Ronaldinho and that will pop in there at some point. And... We should point out, by the way, guys, we are trending on Twitter. IMO11, <laughs> trending we go. Did you have a clap for that? Say it. Good news. I think also Michael Owen is a mug. He's also trending on Twitter. No? Yeah. Um, uh, IMO Live is trending on Twitter, we should say. But yeah, Alan Shearer is in. Well done. Well done to Jordy for getting someone in there. You know what I'm noticing? A lot of black and white stripes in that team. Mate, I'm loving it. A lot of black and white stripes. It. I like the Juventus kit. Yeah. I'm just hoping we have a, a bit of claret and blue in there at the end of the, uh, at the, end of the series because... We've got two in there right now. We've got a bit of yellow in there. So nice. A lot of Italian league. The league that you've been absolutely mugging off all episode. Well, got a lot of it in the, there, The mate. reason I did, though, can I, is because back in the day, I loved Italian football. Um, Go Lazio! Exactly, Do you that? exactly mate. Um, but now it's terrible. So, anyway. All right. Well, that is the IMO 11. Shearer's in. Owen's out. We'll look at that more in the next uh, IMO live episode. Now it's time for a new segment. I mean, it's all new segments. It's, it's all new. new. Everything's this is even new. Newer. I mean, this is new. I don't think it's ever been done before, guys. I'm really excited for this. It's a segment called Stand Up For Your Club. 
Okay, it's where we're going to take some stand-up comedians who are also fans of football teams. They're going to represent their teams. They're going to take each other on, essentially trying to mug each other off, both personally and their football teams, um, in an effort to win the match. Okay, I'm interested. It's, this could be good, man. I think this could be a grower. Yeah. I think this could be a, and a shower. <laughs> Um, today is going to be Lloyd Griffith representing Grimsby Town, right. non-league football. And uh, well, actually, you no, know, it's not non-league football anymore, is it? No, it's League Two now. Sorry, Thanks. get it right. Um, Reese James is representing Spurs. Okay, so we've got Grimsby versus Tottenham Hotspur. When else would you see this clash? I mean, you wouldn't see it. Once Spurs uh, you know, plummet Cop. down the league, FA Cup, Cop, um, yeah. Yeah. Shield, maybe something. If, if Spurs have a, have a Man City like mid nineties um, collapse, when pre-season when? friendlies. Um, you know, there's plenty of times you could probably see this. All right, well, we're going to go to them in a second. Two comedians taking each other on, standing up for their club. Who will be the winner? Grimsby versus Spurs. Let's do it. Heads or tails? Heads. You want? You go first. Is that a pound coin? Yeah. Yeah, it's about the value of your club, isn't it, mate? Oh, yeah. Uh, they were speculating on when Grimsby might play Spurs, say, in FA Cup. You might think that may be third round of the FA Cup, although not very likely, because Grimsby haven't got past the first round for the last two seasons, mate. Oh, you're right. Um, basically. <laughs> Correct. Uh, Grimsby... You're the... I'm the grower, you're the shower, right? The last time that Grimsby played Spurs, can you remember when that was? 2005, in the second round of the League Cup. No, no, really. And we beat you 1-0, John Paul Cabot Makalala, with the 89th minute goal. Uh, and that night, I went out and got very drunk. But you wouldn't have been able to, because you were 14 years old. <laughs> oh, mate. And you, Child. You still look hungover now, frankly. Because I'm a legend. Uh, Blundell Park, Grimsby Stadium, has 9,000 capacity, mate. That means that a Grimsby match is less popular than some Union J concerts. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Union J are very good. Yeah, that's fair enough. Um, People slag off um, Spurs, um, but I defend them. I genuinely Thank think you. that Spurs are the strongest team that have ever been in the Agreed. Premier League because they are continually propping up the top four um, oh, every single wow. year. Just never came third. <laughs> came third last year, mate. Yeah, but you should have come second. Ah, oh, which is what you're going to do in this. Uh, <laughs> Grimsby Stadium isn't even in Grimsby, mate. It's in Cleethorpes. Yeah. Which just goes to show that even Grimsby aren't willing to go to Grimsby. <laughs> is that all you've got? That is all I've got, actually. Uh, well, <laughs> I think, um, speaking about places you don't want to be, um, all the Tottenham Hotspur players um, mm -hmm. actually voted for Brexit because it seemed they were pretty, uh, pretty uh, quick to get out of Europe. <laughs> wow. Because they voted out and you got no uh, trouble. I think you'll find we're still in the Europa League. Which is, I think, more embarrassing. Yeah, more embarrassing. But not as embarrassing, actually actually, as the Grimsby match that you took me to watch against my will. You forced me to sit there. I watched you lose 1-0 to Cheltenham. It was Who pathetic. got promoted that year? Doesn't matter. Promoted from what? Nothing. It was <laughs> pathetic. It was embarrassing to watch, mate. But I tell you what, I did find some of the Grimsby players, their performances were a bit inspiring because I watched them and I thought, I've still got a chance of being a pro footballer here. Mate, I mean, there's no wonder that you're still chasing this goalkeeper pipe dream when your Grimsby hero has to borrow his glove from the mascot. It's pathetic. <laughs> Bigger gloves, aren't they? Um, <laughs> yeah, they are. I actually want you to see uh, Tottenham win the league, and I'd love to be there when it happens. And I think it would be amazing. Do you know what I mean? Like Tottenham will win the league, and yeah. Harry Kane will lift the trophy, and then you'll just switch off the Xbox and uh, <laughs> kiss your mama goodnight and dream of Gareth Bale, um, who Gareth Bale has won uh, played in more Champions League games. Uh, than Tottenham Hotspur since leaving Tottenham Hotspur. Spit it out, mate. It's taken ages. Jesus well, what Christ. I'm trying to say is that Spurs are crap and Bale's better. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> good. Okay. Cry every night over him. Listen, first of all, you know full well that I've got a PlayStation, not an Xbox. Okay, Loser. so do your fact checking first. And fact second of all, what are you? <laughs> well, that's what you do every day in the mirror. What are you going to do when Grimsby win the league or when they got promoted last year? What do you high five the other two fans in the stadium, kiss my mum good night, and then dream of Greg's the baker? Yeah. <laughs> Good, okay, good. Um, Congratulations. The last time Spurs won the league, your dad wasn't even born. Not true, he was one years old. <laughs> <laughs> then he has been catfishing me. <laughs> yeah, he, <laughs> he does that, mate. He slides into my DMs. He does do that. He, don't get too attached, you'll disappear for 10 years soon, trust me. Uh, <laughs> listen, mate, it's no wonder that a man called Lloyd supports Grimsby. You've got two L's at the start of your name, just like Grimsby have at the start of every season. It's embarrassing, mate. It is embarrassing. Here's how bad Grimsby are, right? Here's how bad Grimsby are. Their most famous fan is you right that's how awful how bad do you have to be i went on their wikipedia page right and they've obviously got to bulk it out with a section called famous fans you're in it but since you've been added to it there's been a petition to just rename it fans oh, oh that's your comeback is it no that one's, noise no one's laughing that noise. um tom hotspur's uh, biggest fan adam richman uh well you're only angry about that because you want the man versus food job yeah 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 right. yes, I do. fair enough it's a fortune understood what have you got anything next 
Uh, no, mate. No. <laughs> um, Tottenham Hotspur's badge. Should we have a look at it? It is just lovely a, badge. Good is, badge. Yeah, apart from the fact it's just a cock balancing on a medicine ball. Well, your badge is three fish in a boat. Because we're a fishing town. Right. But that's good, is it? Yeah. <laughs> good. All right. Good. Well, yours is three fish in a boat, and it's being worn by a cock. So there you go. Why? The... <laughs> wow. Okay. 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 Sorry, mate. We're we're still mates. Yeah. Kind of. Next. <laughs> Get into Fergie time, guys. Get into Fergie time. Fergie time. That's appropriate. Okay. It's quite difficult, right? In researching this, it's quite difficult to find out stuff about Grimsby. It's just, it feels like a bit of an unfair battle because it's like kicking a puppy. Uh, but I luckily found out that it doesn't even matter because you don't even support Grimsby uh, as you had a, long, a dalliance when you were younger with Manchester United, oh, as proven no, by this right. photo here. You actually support Man United and you have oh, all along, oh, Lloyd. Oh, oh, so how dare you? No. Claim to be a Grimsby fan, mate. You're I, a Man United fan. I tweeted that uh, a few months ago because I won a competition. Um, so that is that. I mean, that was just I won a competition to meet. What, um, why were you entering that competition? Because my cousin supported Man United. It was pretty easy. Uh, so I tweeted that myself. So you can't even get that. Uh, speaking of Twitter, uh, Twitter actually uh, mailed you this week, didn't they? And said that, that you've got to change your password because currently it's Spurs back four, uh, and Twitter said that it's too weak. <laughs> oh! We have got the best defence in the league, mate. What do you want? Are you first? No. <coughs> Where are you? Second. Which means you'll probably finish third. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> Good game. Good game. And then shake hands at the end. That's what you've got to do. You've got to shake hands at the end, guys. You've got to keep it friendly. But there can only be one winner. Grimsby versus Spurs. Let us know in the comments below who you thought won it. But there's only one judge. His name's the True Geordie. What are your first... first Spencer of all, are on there telling everyone to uh, not take things too seriously. Yep. Don't get caught up in rivalry. Shake hands at the it's end. It's fine. Just shake hands. I always shake hands. <laughs> um, I do. I actually do. Some Look at who he's getting. <laughs> what do you? Uh, what do you think, Johnny? Don't don't give a winner yet. Just talk us through the game. Formations yeah. were they on point? It wasn't like a mismatch. The clubs, you know, would have you would have thought it might have been a mismatch. It went hell for leather. I thought so. I enjoyed it. Before we reveal the winner, should we get them to join us on the sofa? Yes. Lloyd Reese, come on, on down. Get involved. So well done. Fantastic battle. Fantastic battle, yes, clean, no, well but done, fierce. Um, yeah. How did you find it? It was good, yeah. It, it feels weird when you go up against Rishi. It's almost like you're like bullying a child because um, you look 10 years old. Um, how I'm old pretty, are you? Pretty confident. Uh, I'm, I'm 25. I'm of age, mate. Don't worry. About <laughs> you're, you're allowed to sit this close to me without violating your parole. Uh, uh, <laughs> um, that was not for anything child-related, so, so it's fine. I, um, I, th I thought it went uh, quite well. Yeah. Um, I mean, Rishi's a very funny guy. You've got to take it. King of the banter. Reese. Wow, you enjoy no one's ever been king of the banter before. Um, <laughs> Prince of banter. I thought it was a good game. I, <laughs> I actually uh, thought, I thought it was a score draw. Really? Yeah. Well, we'll see in a minute, won't we? Well, there, there will have to be a winner, Reese. I'm sorry. I think it, I've won on penalties it's with It's going to be the true so. Geordie. Who have you chosen as a winner, Spurs or Grimsby? I'm going to say Grimsby. Oh, 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 yes! For some reasons. Black and white shirt, obviously. Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> it, just blind you, you've got to go on the material. No, um, the material. to be fair, because I, I thought that he, he came up with some good comebacks when he was going up against a big mm. club. Like, you know, I like an underdog as well. Like, I've always been that way. Newcastle fan, isn't it? So. Well, let us know in the comments below if you agree with Geordie's decision. But Grimsby Town are the winners. Congratulations, Lloyd. Yeah. Congratulations, <laughs> James. Uh, we're going to move on now and we're going to look at predicting <coughs> some games coming up this weekend in our Super 6 segment, OK? So, um, obviously, six games on Super 6 we need to predict the scores of. You guys can do this as well at home. Check out the link in the description. Uh, get on Super 6, download the app completely free. Join the Spencer FC League if you want to directly compare yourselves oh. to yours truly. Your they job is to try... on the channel now, will they? Their Super 6 have teamed up with us. Yeah. They're very supportive. They can spo sponsor me if they want as well. Jordy's available. Um, they, 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 I have to, if you don't know, if you haven't played Super 6 before, you've got a chance of winning £250,000 every single week. All, right? All you've got to do is get the scores right. It sounds easy. It's not super easy. It's quite difficult. But we're going to have a go at it. Let's First do this. game. This is this weekend. Bournemouth versus Watford. My personal prediction here, I actually think Bournemouth are doing really well this season and Watford are a little bit dodgy. I'm going to go 2-0 Bournemouth. Anyone got any problems with that? Well, Bournemouth have had a bit of an upset last few like last few games. They've not been playing well. They lost to Millwall, and then they yeah. had a bit of a howler the other day against uh, Hull. Against Hull, Fernandez yeah. Fernandez did them like big. Players. He did. He did. Yeah. He did. Tyra Ming's first start got an own goal, bless him. But I, I, I'd say Bournemouth. Yeah. I, I mean, Bournemouth I'd always, I always edge towards the home team. Generally, statistically speaking, they're more likely to win. Jordy, you think Bournemouth will do? Yeah, I'd go. I'd go two one. Go two one. You think yeah, it'd be a goal Bournemouth, Bournemouth. Yeah. 
But it's it's a funny one, like it could go either way that one. Okay. Well my official prediction, just to be registered, is 2-0 to Bournemouth, okay? Let's move on. Crystal Palace Everton. What's happening with Crystal Palace? Because Big Sam cannot get a win. And we all thought when they appointed him, they're safe, they don't go down. Big Sam does that for you. West Ham just smashed him without yeah. Dimitri Payet. Reese, you yeah, support a London Ever- club. Everton are buzzing. Uh, although Everton are very inconsistent, they don't do great after a big win, but yeah. I just think they'll be too powerful for them. I can't yeah. see. I just don't, I can't really back any team that starts Andros Townsend. So <laughs> I'll, go, I'll go Everton all the way. 4-1. 4-1. It's the Battle of the Belgians is good again, isn't it? So Ben it Teke versus Lukaku. Um, yeah. I'd say 3-1 Everton. Really? Yeah. Well, the thing is, if we were to believe the reports, Allardyce actually doesn't, he's thinking about selling Benteke, like to get a bit of money yeah. and then re-sort of populate his squad in the Big Sam way. But I'm actually going to go for a, a one-all draw. I think um, Big Sam will get himself a draw, but he's still looking to get that win, I think. Um, Middlesbrough, West Ham. Obviously, my team, West Ham, away at Middlesbrough. We had a great result at home against, uh, uh, against um, who did we, uh, Palace, wasn't it, on the weekend. Fantastic result. Well, it's a, it's a Pardew-built team, though. You don't want to get too overconfident. As a former sufferer of that kind of football, I know Yeah, that. but Big Sam knows how to make teams... I mean, to score that many goals against a Big Sam team, is not, it's not easy. Mm. And let's face it, there were fantastic goals. The, the Carroll goal and Lanzini goal, mm. unbelievable. Antonio got all three assists, fine form. Yeah. I'm going to back my team. I'm maybe going with my heart instead of my head, but I'm going to say we're going to win 1-0. Anyone think we'll slip up at Middlesbrough? I don't think you slip up. I think you'll probably score more goals. Um, I think Middlesbrough inconsistent. Valdez had a good game the other day, but he's prone to a few uh, donkey errors, isn't he? So I'd say 3-0. Oh, I'll take it. Manage dog? I have that down as 1-0 as well. I think you know, Middlesbrough don't score many goals, but defend quite well. And you'll nick it, maybe Andy Carroll again, because he's, he's hitting some form now. The question is, what's going to happen between now and then with the Pirate situation? Is it going to affect I'm things? I'm going to go 1-1, mate. 1-0. Yeah. No, no nil nil last time match of the day. <laughs> we get that a lot at West Ham. Stoke, Man United. Okay, if you don't want to play Stoke at Stoke, it's been said a lot through the years. They're quite good there, but Man United are in decent form. They managed to rescue a point against Liverpool on the weekend. Um, will Pogba be in fine form? Will he be dabbing in the box again? I, I've got to go with a Man United win in the form they're in. I'm going to say two 0 to Manchester United. Uh, yeah, I'll go two, two, three nil. Let me just say three for everything. <laughs> yeah, three nil Man United. Jordi, you think Stoke can upset? Uh, two one Man United. Two one. Anyone not think Man United will win? Yeah, I'm going to go nil nil first on match of the day. <laughs> <laughs> Martin Tyler loving every minute. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Manage dog. I had that down as two nil as well, and we'll get the uh, Pogba emojis out, and that'll be that. So yeah, Pogba will be happy. All right, West Brom versus Sunderland. Oh, it's no a horrible one. one, isn't it? No, no one, one cares. No about awful, it. Awful, just two um, horrible clubs. Move on. I'm going to say 2-1 West Brom. I'm going home team again. Um, I'll go 3-0 West Brom. <laughs> he loves his 3-0. Loves his three <laughs> three. One, of them, one of them might come through. Yeah. It's 3-1 true. West Brom. 3-1 three, one, with, with a default consolation. Anyone yeah. going for Sunderland win? 1-1. One, 1-0 one. One yeah. for Manchester. 1-1. One, one. Oh, oh, awful, mate. I reckon West awful. Brom will get that one. And then the good thing about Super 6, it doesn't just concentrate on Premier League. Yeah. It concentrates on a number of different leagues. We've got a championship game there. Derby versus Reading. I mean, who's the most clued up in the championship here? You, you represent a league watch, two team. Yeah, okay. I watched a little bit of them. Um, you know, both teams doing all right. Obviously, uh, Yap Stan in charge at Reading. Awful result against Man United the other day. But um, I don't know. I'd say 3-0 to Derby. It is Steve McLaren's Derby, don't forget, Jordy. I, I know hate, how you I feel about him. I hate him. I absolutely hate him. I really hate him. But is he going to do a good job at Derby? I mean, he'll probably do OK in the championship for a while, but um, I hate him. Remember who's in charge of Reading as well, Yap Stam. I, I think Reading, yeah. I'm going to say Reading win because I hate, uh, I didn't mention this, but I hate Stephen Fowler. Oh, you know, yeah, I didn't know that. I hate him. Brand new information. <laughs> I'm going to go with a two-all draw, Derby versus Reading. I think Best it's going to be a great one for the neutral and everyone's going to enjoy it. They are our Super 6 predictions. Don't forget to have your predictions. Click the link in the description. Uh, if you haven't already signed up with Super 6, it's completely free to do so. Yeah. You can join my league. You can get involved. You can also set up a league with your own friends as well. And uh, also, you can win £250,000 if you smash it and get all six results right. Now, on to the hashtag challenge. Okay, Every week, we're going to put someone through their pace on the hashtag challenge. <laughs> this week, it was Faisal Man's Dog Manji's Go. Okay, Before we get into it, let me quickly talk you through what the hashtag challenge consists of. You start off on the halfway line of a football pitch. You have to <coughs> sprint around that football pitch as fast as you can. It's just under 400 metres, so it's pretty much at capacity by the time you finish it. You're going to be Easy. struggling, right? Then you've got to go over five hurdles, jump over them, and the lactic acid will be collecting in your legs by this point. It's not easy. Then you're going to get a football. You're going to go through a load of cones, 10 cones, and then you've got a goal with a goalkeeper in it. You've got to score. 
with that ball. However, every time you hit a hurdle or miss a hurdle, you get five seconds added to your time. Every time you mess a miss a cone or hit a cone when you're going through the cones, you get five seconds added to your time. And if you don't score with your shot, you get 15 seconds added to your time. And the ball only like finishes, and it's only out of play, and the time stops when either you've scored or the goalkeeper's got the ball or you've missed off target. So if you shoot and you get a rebound, it continues, okay? So, Manji, what were you thinking? First person to take on the hashtag challenge. Well, I saw the challenge. Individually, it all made sense. Like, I know how to run, I know how to jump, <laughs> I know how to dribble, and then shoot. But when you put it all together, it becomes a lot harder. Yes, it <laughs> so, does. So, yeah, I, I was one of the first to do it. A few other boys have done it, and you, when they go through it, you think, ah, it's, it's not that bad. Like looking at it, but once you actually start it, it's a whole different ball game. Yeah. Should we have a look? See how we got on. Faisal Manji, hashtag challenge. Let's see how we did. Any last words? Um, just uh, can't wait for this. this. Is what I'm built for: running, jumping, kicking balls. Yeah. That's what I do. <laughs> right on. Go. Looking forward to getting one of those uh, hashtag jerseys. Okay. So you're off, Manji. What was going through your head at this point? You're sprinting out pretty quickly. Right quick, now, I think that's turning left, which I did quite well. Um, that. Nailed that. Up, up to this point, I think everything's going going really smoothly. Running, You've got well, strange running style. Strange running style. Yeah, I don't know where I learned that. I think it's like Phoebe from Friends. That's where you learned. <laughs> a bit of Phoebe from Friends. Uh, it's been commented a few times. I don't know what I'm doing with my arms, but they just seem to do their own thing. I'm starting to slow down now, and I've realised there's actually quite a lot of the pitch left to uh, to run around. Um, just getting close to uh, to Jacko and goal, and that sort of. Give me a little bit of a boost because I want to get away from him as quickly as I could because he's quite scary. So, mm. did he give you any banter on the way then. past? Um, sorry, did he give you any banter on the way past? He was doing all these different poses, which were, were quite funny. That that sort of helped. Um, right now, all, all the boys were here, so well, I give thought more I'd save some energy uh, to come back to these you, hurdles. You have slowed up at this point, yeah. haven't you? These you? hurdles looked about ten foot tall. Right, now, let's point. be honest here. This jumping technique yeah. is not routine. It's not. Yeah, it's different. Not jumping one hundred and one. My uh, my legs felt like concrete at this point. It, it, oh, it, on, to mate. describe that, actually how you feel is ridiculous. And then right now, at this stage, I can't even see. So <laughs> I don't know how I got <laughs> fall through the cones. I genuinely like, my eyes are just full of sweat and my legs are really heavy. I'm thinking, just get get around these cones. This is all being filmed. It's going to go out and it's going to be embarrassing. Uh, you, know, you haven't Ooh. hit a cone there. It's important to point. You didn't hit a cone. You didn't miss a uh, hurdle and either. But are you going to score your shots? Bang! <laughs> Great. Oh, oh, awful! And that could oh, end up hurting you. No. Here's a replay. There we go. Oh, it's so oh, easy. I'm, I'm, slow mo. I mean, you're sort of hidden by the post here, but you can see the shot straight at the key. It's pretty slow to begin with. I don't think we needed the slow mo. <laughs> Let's give him a clap. Make <laughs> man, man, man. Um, so, yeah, before we reveal your time, how did you find it? I found it really tough. Like the, <coughs> once you finish the run, I did not expect to have uh, that heavy set of legs to do the, uh, the, the hurdles and then, and then the dribble. And then when we got to the shot, I mean, I, I thought it would be easier than it was going to be. I thought, just put it in the corner, but you, you physically can't move your legs to do it. Yeah. Not the, 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 the best shot anyway, but it's normally better than that. When we came up with the challenge, we were trying to sort of simulate match conditions. So we wanted people to be tired, like you would be if you'd just done a long run in a match. We wanted there to be pressure, so we had all the boys watching and you had their times in your head, so you're trying to beat those times, obviously, and things like that. And obviously... The time you do in the lap is what you're first thinking about when you do your sprinting, but really it's the missing of the shot or it's the hitting of the cones or the hurdles that are really going to cost you. And obviously you did miss your shot, which does add 15 seconds onto mm. your time. Mm. Whatever happens, you will be top of the leaderboard because you're the first person to do it. Well done. Well, also yeah. bottom of the leaderboard, well you could say. Um, oh. You did it in, in time. You did it 1 minute 22 seconds, 0.64. But obviously, with the 15 seconds added, it ends up 1 minute 37 seconds, 64. So that is, he's laid the gauntlet, guys. That's what the other hashtag players That's and anyone well else that takes on the challenge is going to have to beat. Faisal Manji, 137.64. Well done. <laughs> Let us know in the comments below what time you think you could do it. I'm sure there'll be someone going, oh, I can do it in six seconds. Always <laughs> blowing pipes up in the comments. But um, it was hard. It was hard. It was really hard. It was hard. Uh, I'm going to do that again. Where does he run that? on the hashtag sort of talent? Tower. What do you think you'd do it in? I mean, I, I wouldn't do it though, would I? <laughs> no, I'm, I would I would opt out. I would just, no. All Call right. me when you've got like a strength thing or something. One day, know. yeah, you'll smash that one. I reckon I'd do it in six seconds, mate. <laughs> He's the one. Um, I'd do it in 136. Mm. Oh, come on, mate. You'd score the shot though, it would be fair, so probably a bit less yeah. than <laughs> Right, I've been told it's time for the results of the mass debate. Okay, before we do that, where would you have come down this? Should West Ham sell by it? Yeah, definitely. Reese? Yeah. Yeah, you saying that because you're a Tottenham fan? Or yeah. You, yeah, okay. Do you want Tottenham to buy him? No, definitely. No? Okay, fine. fair enough. <laughs> Let's find out what you guys think, though. Did you vote for West Ham to sell or keep? 
Dimitri Payet. Wow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> wow. 90% Big. of you have said sell Dimitri Payet. That was more people that voted for Alan Shearer to go in the IMO 11, wasn't it? Um, yeah. It doesn't that's a take lot anything away from Shearer, though. No, Shearer's done well. But 90% saying to sell, I think most people agreeing once someone does that it's not good for the club doesn't matter how good a player you are you've got to cut loose the question for me I think I agree ultimately as a West Ham fan the question for me is how much do we sell him for I don't think you sell him regardless I think the offer's still got to be decent mm. but yeah you need what's to get what's the minimum the I mean if they've been offered 22 today I think that's a bit disrespectful I'd say I would have liked 30 but ultimately at this point maybe you take 25 I think the price is on the back of his shirt 27 take oh hello it. how old is he well done uh, he's, 30. he's about 30. to come 30 and then the next question, who do you replace him with? What do you do with that money? Can you get it done in January? Or are you going to wait till the summer? You know, and the, with regards to bartering, any team that come in and want to buy him can always go, look, he doesn't want to be there. You know what I mean? And that's always, a, that's always going to be a, a, a bargaining chip on their, on their side. So yeah. I think he will go and I don't think you'll get a, a lot for him. It's a shame the way it's all, all worked out. Ultimately, we'll see in the coming days and weeks whether Dimitri Pike does get sold but you guys have said he should be sold by West Ham that is it for this first ever IMO live show guys thank you to everyone that's tuned in and voted on the various votes we've done thank you to our guests True Geordie Basil Man <laughs> yeah. I've enjoyed it uh, don't forget to check out Super 6 links in the description make your league with your friends join my league the Spencer FC League and you can compare your results against mine make your predictions maybe win yourself £250,000 that is it for today though drop a like on the uh, live stream if you've enjoyed it let us know in the comments what else you want to see in IMO Live until next time don't go changing don't forget to hashtag it bye bye <laughs> <laughs> Happy.